and you're eating your soup. The Soccer Soup Podcast welcomes in an icon of DC sports, Benny Olson. Thanks for joining us. We all value your time. We're a few minutes late here because Gordo doesn't, but that's pretty standard for <laughs> Mr. Alan Gordon. Welcome the, mar- the market's hot. The market's hot. <laughs> He's a busy man. Rates are low. Rates are low. <laughs> Thanks for the plug, boys. Dude, so so we uh, I'll start with DC because. But now your your title is uh, it, tell me what your what your title is. You are advisor and consultant to the front office. Is that accurate? Sure. Is, yeah, that works. Okay, so right. so we've we've also <laughs> I'm seen doing how, both. <laughs> yeah, we've also seen how much you've been painting. So exactly what does an advisor and a uh, consultant to the front office do? What do you what are you doing with your time these days? He paints a lot. Um, <laughs> no, I I. I, I, I a little bit joking. I, I am obviously um, uh, going down that path a little bit more than I would have obviously when I was coaching and, and playing. Uh, but I, I still am engaged in the club. And um, as you know, it's, I mean, a strange thing where, you know, you're with a club for 20 years and then all of a sudden you get fired and, but you're still working for the club and uh, going to games and helping out and, and trying to assist um, and it goes to, I guess, to kind of shows you how much this club means to me uh, that, you yeah. know, that, that uh, I, I truly love this place. And even though I'm not uh, the head coach, I, I, I want to push this uh, team and, and club and organization forward, however I can help. And whether that's in the front office, whether that's on the field and uh, whether that's scouting, whether that's culturally uh, in and around the, the, the city in which I've adopted and, and uh, love and, and have a good feel for. So I, I think there's a, a few areas where I can kind of push this team uh, forward and, and and nobody really knows it as well as I have. I've, I've been here a long time. I, I know the past. I know the city. I know the team now. I know the players. So uh, I'll find my way. And, and that's what this year is about, is me figuring out um, kind of what, I can do to push the organization forward. Well, I think that speaks volumes about you, Ben. I mean, how many, how many guys uh, can anybody think of somebody that's been a player for so long, been a legend in the club, gets the opportunity to coach. And that happens a lot, right? There's been a lot of those, but how many um, of those guys do the club after firing them, you know, and it's a tough, it's a tough moment, you know, for both sides is, because you guys have been together for a while and there has to be, you know, it's inevitable, right? There's going to be that moment of split and then they keep you around and say, Hey, you're still a huge value. I mean, that's, that, that's big time. I can't think of anybody. Has anybody even been with the club 20 years as a player or, co- I mean, what Tom Brady, how long was he at new England? And that didn't even make it to 20 years. Right. So, I mean, yeah, that's, I mean, it's crazy. It's, yeah. What is that? I mean, does it's, that, is that feel tricky, good right? to you? I, I feel you know, it wasn't your average kind of firing, right? Because of the yeah. things you just said, you know, I, I've been here so long. And, you know, if, if you want, I can boil it down to just the fact that it was time. Like it was time for them to move on and it was time for me to move on. And, you know, I, I was, maybe that was even a year ago of, of when that change uh, kind of should have happened. And, and I knew it and they knew it. And uh, 10 years is a long time. And there's a little burnout towards the end. And uh, uh, just, you know, fresh blood sometimes is what an organ- organization needs. Um, you do go through, you know, I'm not saying it was, it's fun to get fired. You still yeah. go through a mourning process. You still feel like shit, you know, and you feel the ego, you're working with your ego and, and man, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not the head coach anymore. You still go through that. Uh, but I imagine mine was a lot shorter of a struggle than say, if I was, went to a club, they gave me a year and we went on a losing streak and uh, early in the next season, they can me. And I, you know, I, I can't imagine how long I would hold that, whether it's anger or, you know, um, you know, just that, that feeling of uh, betrayal. You know, yeah, I think yeah. some coaches, when you get canned like that, I can't imagine. So I feel very fortunate that I've been able to kind of walk away from this program uh, and have a relationship with the, the, the ownership that I do and, and the organization and, and the city. 
Yeah, the city's probably a big one for me. I spent some time there at Georgetown. I absolutely love D.C. And to spend as much time as you did, I, I can only imagine what that feels like now in terms of looking forward. You had talked about kind of using this year to see how you move the club forward and how you can help the organization. And I, you know, I follow you on your, uh, your Instagram page, Ben Olson Art. Um, and a lot of your, your pieces um, are titled Conversations. And are those conversations, you know, I, I dabble a little bit in the studio, nowhere near your level, but uh, it's, a, it's an isolating thing, right? Where you have these conversations with yourself and, and you think an awful lot. Do you find yourself thinking about DC still because you've been there for so long? Or do you find yourself kind of looking towards what's going to be next for you? You know, is it, is it coaching? Is it, is it art? Is it, what, what is it? Where do you, where do you find yourself so, going? Side question real quick to that. Did you, have you always had a passion for art, even as a player, a coach, or is that something you've kind of discovered recently? So we both kind of are similar answers in it. I, I grew up uh, exposed to the arts. My grandfather, uh, my whole father's side, uh, whether it was textiles, whether it was sculpture, art, inventors, uh, advertising, uh, that th I was exposed to this on my father's side growing up. Um, and it's always been in me. I've always been a creative. The game itself always was my creative outlet. Um, I've, I, I painted, I, I, I drew, you know, I used to sit in my room and draw sneakers, you know, for mm -hmm. years and years. I mean, you, uh, Dan, you probably did the same thing. Yeah, and sure. it's, it's just in you and you have to get that out and creatives understand that feeling. Um, but sport always gave me that outlet. And then when I became a coach, uh, when I was injured for two full years as a player, that itch was in there again, because I wasn't getting that release through sport. Uh, so I started painting as an outlet. And mm -hmm. then when I became a coach, I wasn't playing. And uh, I was managing and it was just so much turmoil. And uh, so that was another kind of therapeutic uh, way for me to stay balanced. And now this, this time is the first time over the last year where I could fully focus in on, uh, almost fully focus in on that craft. And it's fun to do something, um, have, have a lot of energy and focus for something, whether it's golf, whether it's fishing, I don't care what it is. Uh, when, you're, when you're a head coach, you can only focus on that so much because of the consumption and the managing responsibilities of, of the gig. Um, Dan, to your question, conversations was actually a piece that my grandfather made I have in my house. And it was a oh, wow. similar piece to that. And he called it Conversations. And it was a series of his. Um, so uh, one day I just said, I'm going to riff off this. I'm going to, with an ode to him, uh, yeah. work on my technical skills as, as a painter and also my, my palette and work with colors. And, uh, you know, you understand some, some of this, this language, but it's been fun. It's been, and it's resonated with people. The story resonates. Sure. Uh, and I really like doing them. Um, but they're, they're tough for me because it's, it's, it's execution, right? Uh -huh. and, uh, some of the other it's stuff. Different, it's different than some of your abstract work. Correct. Sure. And after I do those, Dan, I, you know, I, I need to let loose. And then I'll have to go to kind of a bigger, uh, a more automatic type painting that I have to, um, you know, not be so tight on. So it, right. it's a nice little back and forth. For and spray, paint, spray paint a, a blue marlin, right? Yeah, then I just put the gas mask on and get <laughs> nuts. You know, just go, go blue it, marlin it, on it would it look used? good in your house, Gordo. You think? <laughs> hey, dude, I'm waiting. I remember, I remember. I got a nice wall of nothingness. Oh, yeah. That's like there, isn't it? I don't know about <laughs> Gordo, dude. This guy's so far from cultured. But. Dude, the, I remember back in the day, you you painted uh, Chris Albright and Leah a, a, a painting for their wedding or for right. a gift, right? Yeah. And that was always hanging on their wall. And I was always just like. Yeah. Yeah, you, you probably didn't understand anything I did. No, <laughs> no. Before. I mean. You so, just. You switched off. Man, yeah, how'd you I, do I that? I would look at it and stare into the <laughs> distance and then move about my business. But is it used generally or mostly for a stress reliever? Because if I try to draw anything that's not yeah. a stick figure, I get stressed out. It's very stressful for me. So is that what it is? Or is it really like no. tapping into that piece of you? It's tapping into that piece of me at this point. There, there have been times, Gordo, during a season where I could sneak away to the studio and just throw shit on a wall because yeah. it felt good, right? Yeah. It was like, it was, but it wasn't, it wasn't good. It wasn't yeah. thoughtful. You know, it's yeah. like anything in life. It's, so it's hard. 
it's it's difficult and yeah. you, you it's just like anything again yeah. you, you play golf you play it more you find and you know oh you're doing this wrong it, yeah it, it's just like anything else it's just hours and and critiquing yourself and ha- getting feedback and and pushing and that's what i really i like about it and to see yourself in another you know again i've been in this lane for so long and to yeah. just kind of veer a little bit and give this thing focus for the short term. I don't know where it goes, but I'm, I'm enjoying it right now. That's and great. Um, again, as, as I veer towards another direction, I, I, I'm still looking, I'm still watching the MLS. I still, uh, you know, spent 20 years and all my life working in this game of soccer. And I know it, I understand it. Um, and I know my strengths and weaknesses in the, in the soccer world and the coaching world. So, uh, you know, I haven't been out of the game that long. And, uh, you know, I, I will say I went to the home opener last week and there was a little bit of, you know, a little itch in there. Like, okay. So the ego pops up and like, yeah, yeah how'd, how'd your ex-girlfriend look walking around with her new boyfriend? <laughs> that's right. That's right. It's like, hey, coach, nice outfit over there. <laughs> um, no, no. You know, so there are, look, I'm being honest, there are those feelings of maybe, you know, that that will come back and, and as these games go and I watch the MLS and I'm going to uh, continue to be engaged in this, you know, to see what that feels like and what I need to do uh, f- for the next 10 years of my life. Uh, that's what this year is about. And when I do something though, next, when I go all in it, it'll be all in, whether it's back in the sport or whether I, I, I push somewhere else. So I think you, go ahead. Sorry, guys. Go ahead okay. Go ahead. If you're, if you're a betting man, um, do you, and you gotta, you gotta put, you gotta put a large, a large bet down. Are you betting that Ben Olsen, let's, we don't know what's going to happen in the future. We mm-hmm. all know that. Okay. Let's just get it out there. Are you betting that Ben Olsen's going to coach again, or is he going to find his, his rhythm in the front office? It's a good question. Um, I know I only give that, good ones. That's a, uh, <laughs> And, and know. we, you know, it's yeah, tough. I, I don't know. I don't even know enough to say, look, I, I, I kind of just answered that question, Gordo. <laughs> no, this. bet. And I'm telling you to, to bet. Put me on the spot. I know that. Hey, I bet. Pick a side. I bet. would say I, I'll, I'll coach again. Okay. Yeah. I'll, no, I'll I, I, you, Benny, you'll absolutely be in. in, in uh, Maybe it's my football. son's team, Gordo, but I'll go <laughs> that's fine. That's fine. Yeah, well, but maybe your son will be in the MLS. Here's a, here's a question for you, Benny. Would you be able to coach for New York or Philly? Um, I, I am a little typecast, aren't I? I mean, it's. Well, you, you've been with one for so long. I feel yeah. like, you know, you're a guy that could have DC United tattooed on your chest from some tough night out with Mike Pecky at some point. But. Yeah. And you, this is what know, we talked to Pablo about, right? I know you He's don't. Salt right. Pablo, we talked to Pablo about going to Salt Lake and making yeah. that decision. Red Bulls would be tough. I, you know, <laughs> it, and it's not just me going there, right? They, they would, sure. Their, it's fans, the whole don't, they, their yeah. fans don't want any part of me, right? Yeah. right? So, you know, and I'm not part of their culture. And, um, you know, I, I didn't have enough success as a coach either to warrant that role like where new york was like oh ben ben's our guy like no ben's probably not your guy um you know the fans don't like me um, and we were rivals for a long time so that one no that one would not make sense um but uh you know i am from pennsylvania uh you know my my hope is jimmy's there for the next 30 years yeah um, because i I absolutely adore the guy i think he's an awesome coach and and a wonderful human um but uh you know Again, I don't know. That that's a, another tough call. But going somewhere and picking my family up and moving for the right opportunity and the right gig, um, sure. You know, I, I'm not I, I'm not tied down to this city. I love this city. We have we're very comfortable in uh, our surroundings and our friends and the, the the life we've life we have in D.C. But you know, I, I'm I, I won't shy away from a, another journey. That's for sure. I don't- I don't know why you're not on television right now. So put your pundit hat. Yeah, on. what's up tell with me, that, dude? Tell me why. Tell don't me they, why. Don't Philly they travel does. every weekend? Let me put some lights on. <laughs> I mean, a <laughs> hey, radio might be a little better, <laughs> but you know, something where they can hear your thoughts. Uh, you know, I, I you know I, I I toss that around, and my agent calls me once a week to push me to be on TV and radio, yeah. and 
Uh, I'm holding them back for now. Again, it's all it, it's all on the table. It's all on the table, and, and I'm trying to be patient and not rush into anything and, and dabble, and whether it's podcasts and, um, you know, I, I, I love talking. I love these this kind of environment uh, uh, and, and pushing the league forward and telling old stories. I, I love this stuff, so this would be a fun uh, a, a fun outlet. That's good. And, Gordo's nose thanks you for those radio jobs turned down. That's, that's big time. <laughs> The um, I, I want to talk a couple oh, things about man. a couple things about just the DC and, and just snapshots. Um, what changed when Payne said that you weren't ready and he wasn't going to give you the job, and then complete about face and he hands you the job because he he came out. It's very rare that he comes out. Anybody comes out and says no, not happening. And then sure enough, there's Ben Olson as a as a head coach. Well, let me take you back. I mean, the first couple of months, it was it was a mess. Like I didn't want that job, uh, but they, they they got rid of Kurt. And uh, I remember when they told me and my heart sank and, you know, I felt like I betrayed him. And uh, I actually reached out to Bruce and I asked Bruce, I said, you know, what do you think here? You know, I asked for some advice and he kind of walked me through it. Um, and so I ultimately said, okay, to that interim. And, you know, the interim is kind of easy, right? You, you, there's nothing to really lose the team was pretty you poor emotional bump for sure yeah it's like you get a little emotional bump but we weren't you know we didn't all of a sudden get good players we had poor players from the the first half and then for my team we had poor players again and we continued yeah. to lose. <laughs> uh, but a, as that that season went um I, I started to feel like you know i could do this job i could pull this off um and then that's where the ego goes and you guys probably would be in the same boat where you like I can do this now, you know, and you go in, I was knocking on Kevin's, I, I knocked on Kevin's door, I had a, a chat with him. I said, Kevin, I'd like to get this job. Um, and Kevin thought about it. He's like, I just don't think you're ready. He's like, listen, you'll get this job eventually. Uh, just kind of hang in there. And did I left- he suggest staying as an assistant to whoever they hired next or w- yeah, at that time? In, in fact, that was the plan. And I was okay. even in that off season involved in the coaching search. Okay. And I, uh, there was a, and you denied everybody and got the job. Kevin, that guy's an idiot. Yeah. <laughs> you see that guy, Kevin? I don't like his tactics. <laughs> no, no, I was, I was all, <laughs> I, I was all in on that. I mean, I, I was truly, you know, and I put a little bit of opinions. Obviously, it was Kevin's call and, and ownerships, uh, but I, I was, I remember being in some of those interviews. Um, Caleb Porter was involved in that, uh, and. Um, so, yeah, anyways, uh, you know, maybe they just ran out of candidates. Maybe they didn't have any other options. And sometimes the one right in front of you, right, is the guy that gets the job. And yeah. that was the case. And you see it all the time, right? The interim guy gets the job. And then it's you interview these guys. And you're like, you know what? He's doing a good job. He's right in front of my face. He's a club guy. Uh, the fans like him at this point, right? That, that'll change at some point. But, they, uh, yeah, it was – I don't know what changed. Uh, you know, I, I'm not sure they either ran out of candidates or it was just the guy in front of them. So when you look back at the 10 years that you did coach DC, were there moments that you were like, ah, shit, I really wish that happened. Now that you, you're thinking back, like, are there players where you tried to get a player and that player in particular ultimately didn't come over and you're like, Man, you know what? That screwed our plan. It screwed our whole year and mm-hmm. it really ruined the next two. To follow up on that, Ben, you you guys had a lot. You, like you had a great year, down year. You know, great year. Like what what was the difference between those years? Was it players or was it like what was it exactly? Yeah, yeah, a little bit of the MLS in the way it was structured. Um, you know, we we use the mechanisms really well. You know, my career started kind of, you know, one good year, bad year, right? And it was like that for a few years, and then we kind of leveled off and we started making playoffs two, three, yeah. and then one down year. And then we'd, we'd always rebound. And that's part of my longevity is mm-hmm. we always rebounded after a bad year, right? You, the, the, the curse is two years. Uh, you know, you get fired, you do two years yeah, in a row, yeah, you yeah. get fired. So if you can rebound, especially with, uh, you know, I had a little clout, so they always gave me maybe a mulligan. Um, but uh, what, what was the difference? Uh, I mean, I know a lot of those years I felt like, 
you, you guys were bringing in a lot of veteran, you know, MLS guys, some of those years where you were, you were pretty successful. And I can't remember if a yeah. lot of those guys left maybe at that, those that was times. kind of our MO, right? We'd yeah. get guys that were a little bit over the hill or, or, you know, coming off of an injury. And uh, we used to joke that we were kind of like the, the UNLV <laughs> running rebels. <laughs> Stacey I never played him. Him. <laughs> <laughs> you know, We're like, oh, that, yeah, we'll take them. And, and we squeezed a lot out of those. We squeezed a lot out of uh, players. Um, the, the times we got caught, uh, I think, was when we uh, we pushed that a little bit too far, right? Yeah. We, 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 we went that road with the older veterans uh, maybe a, a bit much. And then usually when you have these down years where well, you're last place or, uh, or, or it just doesn't work out, it's always a perfect storm. It's never one thing. It's usually a bad signing or two. Mm-hmm. It's injuries to key players, right? It, and then then it's this spiral, right? It's, it's, I've had seasons that just go like this and you, you're feeling good and you just keep rolling. You guys have had all, all of them. And then some just spiral down. And it's just like, how can I get stop this spiral of losses and the mood and, and, and uh, kind of change the trajectory of the season. And uh, sometimes that, that's a tricky thing to do if you don't have the, the horses uh, or, uh, you know, it's, it's just, you're too deep in it. Who's, so who's the one player that we don't know about that you, you tried to get? Give me, give me one. <laughs> can't believe um, I never played for you, by the way. I had I like 10, I to I had 10 you seasons. Like 10 times, man. I was yeah, ten, Cordo, Cordo 10 seasons count, when I was over the hill. It, it was, it was, always, <laughs> your, it was all your, always your demands. Like, you know, oh, your MO oh, is DC United. Oh, oh. Oh. I need this type of car. It's the Lamborghini. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are sponsored by Audi. And you guys were offering me a freaking Chrysler. <laughs> Extra apartment. Um, sorry, what was, what was the question? The one player you missed that you that um, you would have loved to have. You know, had. we we always tried to get Diego Forlan for a few years. Um, oh, he's sexy. And yeah, and we were we floated with him quite a bit. Uh, and you know, a few pipe dream guys down. Uh, so, you know, uh, Verone. You know, Verone. Oh, we I- talk about to this day where uh, Verone was essentially signed for DC United. And what year? Um, you remember the, it's a good question. I, I don't know the year. Like early, early, middle or end? About yeah. middle. Okay. Um, middle, probably 2000. I don't know, maybe 13 ish. Okay. Around then. Yeah. Uh, Verone was, uh, it was pretty much a, a, a done, a done deal. And, um, that wasn't necessarily me. That was more when my playing days. And then we got Gallardo on the back of that. Do you remember this? Uh-huh, Marcelo. Remember Gallardo? This was yeah. more kind of cultural of DC United, not when I was coaching, but oh, he was uh, good, huh? The Studiantes, yeah, the Studiantes pulled him back at the last second, and yeah. they they put this big yeah. uh, parade. Of, Please yeah. don't leave us, you know. And he couldn't leave, but that would have really changed, I think, those those few years um, as a coach. I don't know. I. I didn't you end up getting a uh, Verone from from Red Bull, our our Verone as well? Like, but then he for never a, came or something. For a heartbeat, yeah, that was like. For a yeah, moment. I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. He ended up going back to Argentina, right? Yeah, I yeah. think so. That's right. He never showed up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's all was. big blur. So it's all big blur. <laughs> hey, you know, the last time I spoke with you when I played in DC, my last year, um, that's when Rooney came in, really? and you were high on this guy. You you guys started playing real well. Um, talk to me a little bit about that and then, you know, how that ended. Did you end up, you know, was it, was it all good with Rooney or was there some challenging moments as well? There's always challenging moments, right. With every, every player, yeah. but, you know, from, a, I, he was the only superstar that I ever managed. Um, and I imagine he was a very easy superstar to manage, yeah. uh, compared to a lot of the other ones. Hmm. Um, you know, he came to work every day, and practiced very hard, highly competitive, good with the guys, um, uh, a, a good leader. And, and ultimately, his biggest impact, I think, for our team and the organization was he just made big plays. Like yeah. the lights came on and he was just a winner. He made these plays that were, uh, you know, helped us get the results we wanted, but also, re- uh, you know, re-energize a fan base 
that needed it and a new stadium. Mm-hmm. Uh, he doubled down on the brand new stadium. So that was a, a it was a great hype for the fans. Uh, and he also, and you guys have been on, you guys all have been lucky enough to be on teams with players that come in with huge pedigrees. Um, you know, David comes into to my work. You just give a little bit more. Yeah. It's like, I'm David's trying to on impress them. Yeah. yeah. Like Wayne's coming to practice. Like yeah. I'm going to try a little bit harder and yeah. the game's here. I'm going to do that one extra sprint for Wayne. And that, if you add that 1% to each little player of that importance uh, of going to battle with a player uh, like that, that adds up to wins, man. And yeah. well, especially when they're doing the little shit, like making 60 yard tracking runs. Totally. Totally. Did he do that? What Did he do that and that make a tackle on Will Johnson? And that was uh... <laughs> MLS shows that every like few weeks. I'm but... so glad that was what a Will play Johnson. that was. Though. I'm so glad that was against Will Johnson. <laughs> I can't even tell you. That's the best part. That's the best part of that whole. Yeah, play. I watch that, that clip every Will time. Johnson. I'm like, why doesn't Will just hit that first time? He like takes a touch, looks up, I'm takes so his time. I'm like, what? I I smile every time. <laughs> but I I think to your point, Ben, it's like you know I think as players, and I don't know how you guys are. You know, the fans will always give you shit, you know, and, and boo you and the coaches are going to be harsh on you. And at the end of the day, after you get, you know, get some thick skin, that doesn't really matter anymore. Yeah. Um, you want to do well for the fans and all that kind of stuff. But what really matters is your peers. You know, you want that, you want that acceptance from your teammates. And if it's a guy like that, then you want him to think that you're good and a good player. And so you're going to give that kind of little bit, I think. That player but, could either uh, crush oh, oh, that, that player could either crush your team or make yeah. them so oh, much yeah. better. Oh yeah. 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 The, the, uh, that, that's interesting. The, what, let's talk about champions league, Benny, cause we got, we got a couple teams in champions league. I know you competed in it. We've all played in it. We haven't coached it. Why is it, why is it tough? Why is it tough to win? Like, is it, is it a priority for coaches? Is it the balancing act? Is it the roster? Like, why, why can't we do it? Cause I feel like our teams are good enough. Our players are good enough. It's getting better, right? We're putting, we're putting more teams in, you know, the later stages of the competition and we're, we're, uh, we're hitting the finals more and more on a consistent basis. So we certainly separated ourselves now, I think from everybody except, Mexico. Mexico. Right. Yeah. And, you know, the easy answer is they're, you know, quadrupling our salary cap right. and, and they're buying better players that uh, more times than not have better playmakers in big games and have shown a little bit more moxie and bravado when the, 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 the championship big moments um, are in front of you. And does that equate to money? You know, I don't know. Uh, I, I don't know. There, I think there is a little bit of that, that hurdle of trying to get over that a little bit more um, of playing the Mexican teams, but it's a good, it's a damn good league, man. Yeah. And they're, they're, they're attacking players in particular um they're, they're killers and yeah. when they when they you know get a look uh, they 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 end up uh, making you pay i mean whether it's you know uh, uh, america um tigress i mean these, <clears throat> these are these are serious teams mm. and uh with some serious firepower and we're getting there but it's 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 a little bit slow we ain't there yet no no we're not it's uh, those road games that always seem to be the tough part. Playing in playing in Mexico always seems to give MLS teams problems. I mean, when they play here, pretty evenly matched. You don't really see that big of a discrepancy. But man, when you play over there, it's like you're getting crushed. Five nothing, four nothing, four one. Coming back from from the first legs, you know, it's kind of crazy. Those those games are impossible. We've all yeah. played them, man. <laughs> We've all gotten hammered down there. Yeah. I mean, you know, the the elements plus. You know, and they're just good. The fans, they feel it. They just, they get those Olays going and you're in big trouble. Yeah. 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 Sometimes it's an altitude. It's always, it's always a little tough, but you know, we, we got enough guys. We have enough players in this league now that are experienced in every type of atmosphere and travel. Um, We, we, we gotta, we gotta start um, doing better there and, and 
I think the league knows it. That's they made it a priority to go after that league and um, you know try to try to hurdle them. But we we got a ways to go. You're a betting man. Do you bet that um, Liga MX is connected to MLS in a more significant fashion within the next five years? I think when you see what's going on in Europe, and you know the the wheels are turning, man. The wheels are turning with a lot of people that have a lot of money and are looking to um, kind of push soccer yeah. forward. And yeah. I don't think anything's off the table right now. Yeah. And whether it's MLS, whether, I, I don't know. If, I don't know. I, I'm not in those conversations, but I do know there's a lot of. Gordo's people. got a lot of money, dude. He, he does refis. He's, a lot he's, of smart dude. people yeah. like Gordo <laughs> uh, thinking about this stuff. <laughs> well, you know, I don't want to derail where <laughs> – I don't want to derail. This, Please you know. derail. <laughs> you know, Ben, g- give me a give me a quick uh, give me a quick story about you know Pablo. Pablo had these stories about you know, and he's Pablo is great because he actually cares and he learns and he studies and he and he you know he thinks deeply about these things and it's he's really interesting to to talk to and he really understands the X's and O's and I was impressed. Give me, give me a story about as you were becoming this coach and, and morphing into this, this guy, um, number one, who, who was, who's your guy that you're looking at as a coach and just being like, okay, I want to kind of do it that way. And then give me, give me a story about somewhere you traveled and what you kind of learned. Um, if you have any of those, that was really impactful for your coaching career. Um, a big question Gordo. that's a you're like you're a lot to to ponder um you're you're surprised that i grew up and (laughs) you think i'm still the guy that got your owner dc united owner in a headlock at the bar (laughs) i'm not that guy anymore i was 25 i to answer i take you know i think like most coaches there's a little bit you're you're exposed to so only so many coaches before you um you know, or in charge yourself and me even fewer because I, I was just dealing with p- coaches that I played for. I didn't have the luxury to have some infrastructure of saying I coached under this guy and this guy. And I didn't have that time Gordo to like figure out who I was. And yeah, it right. was really, really difficult for me to, for the first three, four years, try to find out who I was as a coach because of that. It's so a in Pablo, survival mode. A total, total survival. Pablo talked about it, right? Like yeah. you're, you're you're figuring it out yep. in a job where you're managing up, you're managing returning staff. You're, you're, you're trying to have meetings. Imagine yep. going from players to now managing an entire staff That's and tough. your team. And then now you're dealing with the trainers That's and a lot. now That's you're a calling lot. your ownership and explain. It's just so overwhelming um, that it's, it's very difficult not to prepare yourself uh, as best you can to know exactly who you are as a leader Right. And that's an important thing. And I learned that a couple of years too late. Um, and and ha- what's your game model? How do you want your team to look? I didn't know any of these things. So for three years, I'm just swimming and, you know, trying to fight out and, and get my team to just grit it out and fight. And we were able to do that. Uh, but that's not sustainable, right? You, you do in the modern game, especially, you, you better know who you are. You better have your game. There's too many layers now to not be prepared uh, for, or better prepared than I was uh, in the game. And a couple of years into that, I, we had 2000, uh, what is it, 13, we won the, the Open Cup. Mm-hmm. But we also, in that year... It was a rough year, right? Yeah, we, we were last place. We broke yeah. the record for worst team in the history of the league. <laughs> Yet you won Open Cup. That's incredible. We to Salt Lake yeah. and beat them in their building, which, as you guys know, is, is one of the toughest places to play. That's crazy. Um, I had the luck yeah, to right. maybe, like, kind of throw the league down the stretch and, and save everything yeah. for the Open Cup to get to the finals. But the finals was still, you know, a one-off in Salt Lake against Beckerman and Nikki and that squad. Right. It was was an epic win. So in some ways, my worst year was my most successful. But (laughs) after that year, I I really evaluated myself. And I was like, dude, this is not like I really got to evaluate myself and who I am. And I Pablo talked about a very similar thing. Yeah, you take that and you say, and what I did is I I started with me and saying, okay, who am I? 
What am I about? What are my strengths? And I need to start surrounding myself with people that, you know, can cover up my weaknesses as a coach. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when people are like, that, oh, what'd you learn as a coach? I was like, you, you find out who you are because we don't have it all. Very mm -hmm. rarely do we have people that have it all, whether you, you're, you're dynamic, you're, you're, you've got character, you can manage, you've got the tactics, you got it all in modern football. So you, soccer, you, you better find out who you are and, and get your team together because of all the layers. And I started to find that out. And by the end, I, I, you know, I have a really good feel of who I am and what I, I need my team to look like to be successful. So I don't know, Gordon, I don't know if that No, ends. that's great. No, that's exactly you know, what I was, you know, that's your moment. That's your moment. Listen, you, you know, Bruce, Dan, you, uh, you, you've been around Bruce, you know, Br Bruce is a special guy and, you know, he, um, you know, he means a lot to me and he would be the one coach that has been the most influential uh, in my, um, in my career. But I also look back to high school basketball coaches and yep. it, it, I'm amazed at some of the tactics and the, some of the philosophies that they had that I still go back to and use. Mm -hmm. uh, That's and then, interesting. Uh, yeah. So that's so long, long with so I was long winded. No, that, that, that's what we want to hear, dude. That's a great, it's a, it's a, it's a great answer and it's honest. It's deep. I mean, those, those years, people, they don't realize how difficult of a situation that is. There's a lot of pressure. And like you said, there's a lot of elements that you got to try and control when you really have no idea. So it's and, like and to manage yourself, you know, it's, it's not a job where you, you know, everyone's like, find balance you know you, you know how do you find balance as a head coach it's like people are, hey, you don't you, yeah. you, want, you want balance in your life don't become a coach don't become <laughs> a head coach of a professional organization right. yeah. balance seems impossible they're long days short years right yeah. they yeah. uh they fly by ben ben going yeah. back to when you were were a player you had an obscene amount of ankle problems how many surgeries did you end up having throughout your career yeah. 10, 10 yeah. surgeries throughout your 10 year career, basically, right? Or a little bit longer, 12 years. Yeah. Um, can you talk about a, a little bit about, you know, how frustrating that must have been? Because it wasn't just a one off thing. It was you were coming back and then it happened again or it wasn't feeling right. And um, just kind of what your mind, you know, what you were going through a lot during your career. Because he actually walks on his ankles. <laughs> it's not healthy. <laughs> it's not. It, it was difficult. The, the first round was extremely difficult because it was too soon to end my career you know and as this as the second surgery comes in and the third and now you're on your fourth and you're like really like 22 years old this is it you know I, I went from being in Nottingham Forest potentially to get you know bought uh, yeah and have a, a, a career in Europe to now maybe you know going back and getting my degree and being a teacher I, it was so just, it was 24 years old. It was that early. 20, uh, 22, 22. 20, yeah. You know, I, what, yeah, it was about, to, uh, yeah, it was about my second year. I went over to Nottingham forest Yeah. Uh, for a few months on a loan. Remember when they used to do those like kind of winter loans, yep. you know, and it was great. It was like a, a, a glimpse of European, uh, football and, and you crushed uh, it over there while you were there too, didn't you? I was doing great. And that, you know, there was potential buying, you know, I, I, uh, they were in talks with DC United. I really wanted to stay. Uh, and then I broke my ankle and it's pretty cut though. They were like, yeah, here's, here's a first class seat back to DC. And Get how did you do it? Was it in training up a game or? It's interesting. Uh, we were playing Blackburn. We were playing Brad Friedel at the time. And uh, I was at the top of the box on a corner kick, the ball headed out and I'm like watching the ball, you know, I'm going to volley this at the top of the box one of these and um i wasn't watching the guy coming through just like oh i hit the ball and he he hit me uh, on my follow-through and i broke it and over there it was so blue collar that you know i gutted out the rest of the game I did you know it. it right away or no 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 it was it was a hairline i broke my ankle but it, i could play it wasn't a sprain so it was it just kind of was a knock yeah it. okay and then i trained for like i got through like another game and a Dang. whole a week of training on it like because of the culture there, it was just yeah. like they see me limp for 20 minutes, and then it would warm up, and I could get through it. And then the next game, I, I just did a ball, and I pushed off, and then it just snapped. 
Oh. Uh, and it just went, and there's film of me kind of looking. I thought someone threw a rock from the fans. Uh. That's what it felt like, because I never broke a bone in my, bo in my life. And I was looking around because I thought a rock was thrown from the fans. It hit me in my ankle. And uh, of course, I've heard I heard that about like uh, an Achilles tendon <clears throat> snapping. That, yeah. that, that's probably what it felt like. So then it was, you know, back, and then it was five surgeries. And, uh, they just, or uh, it, it took a, it was a, a year and a half, and it was, it was frustrating, <laughs> but it, it was rewarding. I changed my game when I got back. I wasn't that quick. I couldn't move as well, so I went from being a, um, a kind of a spunky wide midfielder to uh, an old grizzled holding slow midfielder. <laughs> Talked like a lot. Ben, are you are you bow legged? Because I, I have a funny... Is he bow-legged? So, so listen, so listen. Is that a I, real I, question? Yes, that? it's funny. I, I, you know what? Okay, so I didn't know that about you. And all I remember is when I injured my knee and I had surgery from Burt Mandelbaum, he kept saying, oh, your legs are like Ben Olsen's. Your legs are like Ben Olsen's. They're very bow-legged. And I'm just that like, oh, really? Like, so that's the worst compliment you can get from any doctor. <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, and he kept like putting his fists in between my knees. He's like, "Look, you can't touch your knees together. Look, you're very bow legged." And I'm like, "Oh man, yeah, I'm oh. gonna have some some inner meniscus problems uh, later on in life." So was it just bone spurs after that? I know you had a bunch of bone spurs, or or what was the deal? Why couldn't they sort it out? So I got back, and then the second one was a bunch of bone spurs. It was essentially too many bone spurs in my ankle, and when they started taking them out it shifted. They were in oh. there like keeping it together and it uh, shifted. Yeah. And then it would put all these stresses on my ligaments and that oh. was basically it. The second round of five surgeries, it was coming back after that. It was embarrassing. I was How just, old were you when you retired? 32. You know, so you so lasted that, a while. You know, I did those around 30 years old that, that year of surgeries and I came back for about a year and it, was, it wasn't it was pretty. But I was, I was proud that I got back. Yeah. Um, and uh, it, it at least gave it a, another run my yeah it was it wasn't pretty how's the body now if you if if we all went out there could you play a game of pickup i can play pickup i, I can do, do it do you I do everything i play a little bit uh, i play a lot of tennis and uh, and a big tennis and, guy yeah, that's it's, right it's, it's high level Benny, that's we got great. a couple quick quick ones for you um we, with the uh, Major League Soccer season upon us, uh, we were talking a little bit last week um, just about some of the players that are in the league, some of the some of the coaches. Uh, I'd be intrigued to hear your opinion on not best player in the league, or maybe it is best player in the league, but player your first draft pick of any player across across the league right now to start your team with. Sal did not do good on this question. It took him about 10 minutes. Yeah, I couldn't. Yeah. It's, it's, it's tricky, right? There, it, that's, that's the fun part of our league right now is it, it's actually a difficult question because there's a lot of ballers. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we're some, some real players right now, but um, I'd probably start with Lodero. Okay. Lodero. Yeah. That's I, a good I just, pick. You know, I, I, I like what he brings every game. Yeah. And he seems from the outside – uh, a guy that is, is his energy, his ability to win is contagious. And he seems like a, just a, one of these superstars that gets it. Mm -hmm. uh, and he just continues to produce. And you don't know necessarily how. You're like, ah, you watch the film and you're like, we can, we can deal with this guy. We can, we, we can lock this guy down. It's He's like, so right. busy. Right. He's so busy. And then he ends up with like eight chances created in a goal. It just makes sport. like, it's just so easy to run. Yeah. Well, look at that squad since he showed up. Yeah. They can't stop winning and mm -hmm. going to champ. Valeri, to Valeri was a bit like that. I know he's older now. He's 35, I think. Yeah, but he was but in his prime, yeah, he was a bit like that. He'd always get now, his numbers. Uh, it must have been so fun being, uh, uh, you know, playing on the field with, with him, you know, from a distance. You know, obviously coached against him a few times. And, and what what a treat. I mean, what, oh, a, what a treat he's been for the league. And, yeah. 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 And again, Different another level. guy that is, I know he's a little, a little quirky at times, but I, I tell you what, he, he steps on the field and it's on. Yeah. Why am I drawing a blank from uh, the Who? chat that was up in Montreal? Um, number yeah, eight. Piatti. Yeah, he Piatti. was. He Piatti was, was money. He was a player. Piatti. 
He, yeah, he, was a, he was a little different than Valeri, but similar, yeah. right? They had a similar yeah. profile. He was like more athletic, stronger. He could do it more on the dribble. Yeah, oh, yeah. He could right. go vertical on you a little bit better. Yeah. He, he, I used to fight with Mike McGee all the time. We used to say Piotti or, or Valeri. Yeah. You know, and, and who'd you take, bro? I, it's, you know, either way, you're disrespecting somebody, but <laughs> I, you know, I just remember this one game. Valeri was playing against us, and this is how it came up. And he was the sauciest guy I, I had ever, you know, it seemed like that I had ever seen. He was just on. Mm -hmm. uh, Valeri does it every game, too. It's yeah. you don't have a wrong Those pick, outside but, of the boot, around the corner flicks. Yeah, Dude, yeah he had it all. Yeah, he was just on fire. I, I went down to Argentina for a recruiting trip as a coach. And uh, I think it was uh, Studiantes. I'm not sure who he was, uh, Velez. I'm not sure who he was playing for at the time, um, but he wasn't starting. Might have been River. Was he? Was, he, uh, was it anyway. Valeri? Are you talking about yeah. Valeri? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I heard a lot of people were, were down there in Argentina scouting him everyone, at the time. Everyone yeah, was down there. And I, I thought I was kind of first to the. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I was first. And, uh, Yo, who's this guy? Yeah, you're <laughs> well, on the allocation list. He was playing in a reserve game. You know, he was out of favor with the first team and uh, watched 10 minutes. I went, yeah, he was a bit of like a super sub a little bit I, at times, I remember. He was playing like an eight. Yeah. I turned to the, I said, that guy, him. I said, that guy, who, is, who is he? Him. Bring okay. me him. <laughs> we'll, take, we'll take him. We'll take him. We'll take him. We'll take him. And, uh, you know, the agent kind of laughed at me. We made a couple phone calls and it was, was it Caleb who? Yeah, Caleb. Caleb ended up getting. Yeah, it, yeah, Caleb was here about three days ago and kind of already has the deal done. So. Yeah, that's yeah. the one where you you were waving that's on the, the one way. Went, to the that's airport. the one that got was away. On the way out. That's the one. The question before. That's the one that got away. Yeah, so I'll, I have another question because um, so I play with Colin Martin and um, he had meant he had been on a night out and I think he he met up with Wayne Rooney one night and I think he asked him this question. He said you know, who's one of the most talented players you've ever played with or, and he mentioned Acosta uh, from DC. So I just wanted to kind of pick your brain. You know, why would he say that? I mean, I thought he was an excellent player too, but kind of what were your, what was your idea on him? Well, for that year, uh, you, you talk about when, when I talk about a Wayne Rooney coming in and elevating another person's game, that he's the, he's the perfect example of, Lucho now saying, I'm playing with Wayne Rooney. I'm on a stage now with this guy. I'm playing right behind him. I'm connecting to him. And their relationship, it happened instantly. Like within a week, these two got on the same page. And you've seen it, right? Good players. And there's another good player. They understand soccer. It's not brain surgery. Yeah. They, they, just, they read each other and they, they loved playing with each other. Yep. And it just, it was, it was organic. Uh, it was certainly we had nothing to do with coaching and they, they, they posed to teams a lot of issues because they would just kind of float around together. And it was hard for teams to not get out of their defensive structure and shape to deal with them. So our overloads caused teams uh, big issues again, organically during that time. And um, you know, he just, he, he, he gave Lucho gave more. Uh, he, he took care of himself better and he would just enjoyed the game and he really expressed himself. And he didn't also feel like the year before where he didn't have Wayne and he felt like he had to do everything. So every time he got the ball, it was six step overs and over you know, dribbling and, yeah. over dribbling and then he was getting fouled and he was getting frustrated. So now he had kind of a partner in crime here to connect with and, and uh, enjoy the game. And, uh, it's uh, that was a, that was a fun year, and then the off season became a, a bit of a show with the PSG, and uh, it, it just it soured a lot of things, and uh, he was ready to move on. I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy he's back in the league, and because I, I think that he's it's a it's a great league for him, and he's super exciting for fans. And, uh, yeah. yeah. Who's um who's the best coach in the league right now? We have an incredible list of candidates. I feel like, which is pretty wild, because. I don't know if MLS could have always said that, but we were we were running through the list and going down one, two, three, four, five, and it felt like any one of them could have taken the name, taken the well, cake. Everyone talks about the evolution of players 
in this league? And hey, how was the changed and the players, the younger, the more athletic, but not enough people talk about the evolution of coaching mm-hmm. in this league. Uh, and every year it gets harder to get in here. It gets more global. Uh, the, the, the interview process is much more difficult to pass. And it's not just hand it to the, the guy that just retired and, you know, <laughs> you, you, you have to earn it because there's there's a list of candidates that are super um, um, uh, you know well versed and have great resumes applying for each job and that yeah. brings that brings new tactics and new understanding and uh, so it's uh, it, it has evolved. I think it's a great league to coach. I say this all the time. You know, a lot of coaches or a lot of leagues. They, there's, there's a similar style, not, not the premiership and, and not maybe the, the top two leagues, uh, two or three, but most leagues in the world kind of, they play a similar style within their league. You know, you go to Scandinavia and you come to our league, you're going against an Argentine, then you're going against a German, then you're going against, you know, a, a Swiss guy, then a Scandinavian, then an American old school coach. You have to adapt every weekend to a new style it's going to be high press one day it's going to be uh you know maybe a little bit more of a transition defensive model then it's going to be a dutch based model every weekend is going to be different so from a preparation standpoint um it's a lot of work for coaches and you know you you better have a right staff that understands tactics so with that being said, you know, there's always been, we, we all understand that MLS is different for all the reasons that you just said. It's always been different. It's never as easy to come into this league and be successful on the pitch as well as being a coach. So my question to you is, you know, you know, and this is just kind of popping in my head now, but you look at the coaches that have been successful, you know, mainly successful in the last you know, however often it's, it's Caleb Porter and it's, it's uh, Schmetzer over at, you know, you know, it's like these American guys. Guys that know the league. Huh? Guys that know the league. And Bruce, right. And Bruce and 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 Ziggy and all these guys. Right. And And Tata. Yeah. Tata. So like besides (laughs) Tata, right. Um, That was the guy from Atlanta, right. Yeah. So besides Almiron, yeah, Alfred, yeah, Almiron, yeah, yeah. Like, do you think do you think that it's hard for foreign coaches to come in here and win? Yes, yes it is, and and uh, I think there's a real shift uh, in the for the first time in a while. Yeah, and it just looking at what you just said, Gordo. Right, it's not it's not some. It, they're just looking at the facts. Here, yeah. here, are the, here are the coaches. You got to know the league. Here are the coaches that are winning MLS Cup yeah. and doing the best consistently. And yeah. they're American coaches. So, yeah. you know, as much as I, I say, it's, you know, all these coaches are coming in, it's, it's hard and tactics are, you know, I still put my money on the American coach in this league yeah. any day of the week. And uh, that, that's safe money. It's safe money. money. I mean, let's be honest. Come on, dude. Give me a, give me a break. Like- well, that, that, and it's also, there, there's a, you know, there, there's, there's a cultural thing that comes with, an American coach as well. And, and sometimes it, it is a little bit more symbiotic in how you deal with a GM and, and uh, you know, your ownership. And sometimes that's a little bit of an easier um, working relationship uh, as opposed to when someone comes in from, uh, you know, Argentina or, or Scandinavia where they have their own visions and that, me- that meshes with kind of that culture, uh, that American culture and ideals of what has already been here. Um, some do it better than others, and and some, like you said, Tata, and, and there's so many examples of guys that have come here and had success. But listen, ultimately, guys, you know, it, it, you, you still need players, and you still need to to spend. And you see in the teams that um, uh, you know really commit on infrastructure and 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 game changing players do well in in this league. Yeah. Uh, you know, you can do a league, you can get the supporter shield and you can grind that. Out. But when, you know, the MLS cup is here and yeah. teams are healthy, it's, it's the big ball. And it step up and, and make, make big plays. And yeah. um, it's, uh, I could have won with Atlanta. Yeah. <laughs> if I was, I, I, was I, I was injured and I won with them. I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Jose, 
Jose. Almarone, would, Almarone and Darlington just give them the ball, let them carry oh, it like Darlington 40 yards up the Almarone field. Almarone and Joseph Martinez. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. I used to love putting horse. that lineup up. I was yeah. like, yeah. Almarone. Oh, that hurts. Oh. Yeah. Oh, okay. well, they they got the whole squad here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, no suspensions on this team. <laughs> Benny, Benny's turning around the second. They brought everybody? Everybody? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, man. That's All right. Well, great, man. I, I, I got a lot of respect for that guy, man. He took yeah. care of me in Argentina. Went yeah, down to yeah. Maxi Uruti, and he brought me in. Um, to, and, and we, Are you saying like, Tata or? Tata. Yeah, what a, what a guy, right? Office. Yeah. He told me about the game plan the next day because he knew I was going to the game. And yeah. What a loving guy and, and warm. And What did you oh. think? I mean, I think he sees the game, like, incredibly, like, just the way he, even at halftime, would be like, oh, this is what they're doing. This is how we beat it. Go ahead. And we would just, like, still give the ball to Almarone and let him do it. But, <laughs> but at the same time, like, he saw the game so perfectly. It was crazy to me. It seemed to be clear. Yeah, he just watches like, so much, I think. Yeah. He, did, he didn't seem to complicate it. And no, he exactly. Exactly. And rhythm. And, again, I, just from the outside, it was always a uh, – anyway. Yeah. One of the yeah. best things I've ever seen is I played for Pano and Pano is just, we've talked about it. Complete yeah. psycho, complete <laughs> on, the, on like on, I'm, you know, just flip out, you know, for 90 minutes on the sideline, right. Screaming, swearing. Tata turns to him. We're in Atlanta. Yeah. Tata turns to Pano and he, he folds his arms and With he it. stares at him for 10 minutes straight. <laughs> With his game. sweater he tied on his he neck. Just like, he just, <laughs> stood and stared at him like what are you doing right now you need to calm down i think you guys beat us that game too i played was it the open cup when you guys yeah. beat us in open cup yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah i remember that game all right let's get into the plea the fifth though because ben's ben's we got to be respectful of his time he's got to so. go to bed yeah yeah so go ahead gordo do you have the questions so benny here's the deal um gordo's gonna ask you five questions okay you can plead the fifth on any one of the five if you answer all the five you can ask us whatever you want, and we have to answer honestly. Oh, God, this is like a speed round or something. Yeah, speed dating. <laughs> speed dating. <laughs> however, you, you want to answer these. However, you want to answer. Take your time. Take your time. The you most famous up? individual to buy a piece of your art. What was the piece about? Uh. I'm trying to get him into some players' hands. You know, Ali Bedoya has a piece now. Um, um, he's, he's, he's actually has a really nice collection. He's, collector. he's got a great collection. He's got a great collection. Um, yeah. You know, uh, Kyle Martino's coming down to pick one up, I think, here. And we're going to do a little piece on uh, uh, one of mine that uh, I did kind of shortly after I got fired. That was one of my only therapeutic ones, like, you know, just kind of – and uh, as, it, it, it has ego. I don't know if you've seen it. it has ego written all over it. Yeah. 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 Okay. I've seen that one. So that one. So it, it, after you know, week a week in, I went to the studio and uh, I, I couldn't paint. I was just it's still again still going through that process that a lot of people have to go through, and uh, I was struggling on this one piece. It was terrible. It just kept just dark. It just wasn't going anywhere. So I just started writing ego on it because really that's what I was kind of dealing with, and that's one of the things I think a lot of coaches are going to have to or have to deal with when you leave, leave the game and, and same with the player, right? You guys are probably have dealt with that as well, where you, you're not the important guy anymore. And you're looking at that next stage and what's next and finding your next rhythm and credit to you guys, you guys have all, I think done a really good job of that. <clears throat> but anyways, um, Kyle, you know, heard that. And I told him that story and uh, went into kind of a little bit more detail than that. And he, uh, he loved these. Like, I'm coming down. I'm coming dude, that's you. that's wild, dude. He's like, I'll take, I'll take it. I'm that's a good down. story. That's a good that story. Ha that's how it happens, huh? That must be pretty. I mean, he said, I'll take it. I haven't given him the price yet. <laughs> <laughs> a very good you negotiating tactic, Benny. He already sold it. That's great. <laughs> that's a good answer. All right, ranked former teammates: Wolf, Armis, Petke, um, Nelson. Ryan Nelson. Nelson. As coaches. Oh. Well, that's okay. He's changing. He's changing. <laughs> that's a whole. There's two that's coaches. Wolf, who? Wolf. Josh. <laughs> yeah. Josh Wolf, Armis, Petke, yeah. and Ryan Nelson. Well, um, 
shit. Um, Where's Nelson coaching? Nelly's Nelly's in DC. Um, and he, he's, he's an now, right? kind of an entre entrepreneur. Yeah, he does a little of that. But um, Nelly was, you know, Nelly over Pecky. No offense, Pecky. Uh, I mean, you got different, you know, Chris, all, all of them are, I'll say this, all of them are winners. Every one of them's winners. I can't rank those guys. Dude, play the guys, fifth. you played the play fifth. The fifth. Oh, that's great. <laughs> How do you rank a forward and a, a, a center back? <laughs> what do you mean? They're coaches. They're coaches. There's coaches. only one position, they're a coach. Um, as a coach? Yeah, yeah as a coach, as rank a coach. them as, as, as uh, coaches. Um, <laughs> Even harder. <laughs> <laughs> you know, none of them really have that long of a... You know, Pecky, Pecky was a winner. Pecky won a lot of games with that team, and he did it. He did a really good job. Chris, I love you know. I'm I'm rooting for him in Toronto. Great you're coach. Not, you're, you're not ranking Nelly. Whatever Wolf. Let, I, I'm gonna say Wolf's my number one guy. You know why? Because he's under my tree. <laughs> <laughs> let me tell you about my tree. You first. should paint if that. Have time, if you have time, if I could indulge you. You should paint Bruce's tree. Let that would be a good tree. Austin staff that, that you know they should be paying me a little bit of money for. There we go. Davey Arnold, I, I put those both those guys into retirement and made them coach <laughs> under me. <laughs> um, Nolan Sheldon, who, you know, I basically made his career. I sent him over to Austin. That's three, who was my assistant coach last year. And then Preston Burpo went there, who also – Oh, was there too? So the entire staff is basically my staff and my tree. Wow. Um uh, but do you think there's anything on the website? Or Yo, who's your who's your <laughs> agent, <laughs> Benny? You need you need, might need to re-sign somebody there. Nothing from Matthew McConaughey saying <laughs> yeah, thank you. Note. I sent him a message on Instagram about coming on the pod. He hasn't responded yet. Hey, by the way, the green the green the green lights. That book is fire. I need to I need to read that. I've heard good things. I've it was great. Things. A lot of fun. That book. I agree. Great. Um, all right. All right. So I didn't answer that one either. Keep going. No, you didn't. Um, all right. Coach, you hated the most. Absolutely loved shaking his hands, at, his hand after you picked up three points. <laughs> it's got to be somebody. That's a good question. Uh, Maybe not even someone you hated, but just someone you like to beat. It didn't happen much, but I beat Greg once or twice, and that that certainly felt good. There you go. There you go. But, there you go. but he shook my hand quite quite. A few more times where they won so <laughs> he won't mind me saying that greg greg once beat us to tell this story greg once beat us and i love greg i think he's super sharp and this is that. vanny or burhalter oh, i'm burhalter. sorry burhalter. burhalter burhalter okay okay and uh he after he beat us he came into my locker room you know I, i'm always good with coaches what's up what's up what's up and he came in. He he's like, "Hey, come here. Come here. What would you think about what we did here?" And he starts talking about yeah. what he did to win the game. <laughs> <Right> <laughs> what a back! <laughs> but that's Greg, right? He he couldn't like kind of turn it off. He was just like still talking. He wasn't like trying to rub it in. He just he, he his brain worked that way, and he was talking. He's just so. Uh, he's a wonderful coach, and I, I love Greg. I'm, I'm I, I, mean, I heard a I heard a story about Greg as well when when uh. This was after in 2015 with Red Bull, we lost in the the conference uh, finals to to Columbus, and I think it was the next year at the draft, and and they're at you know the coaches are all at the draft, and uh, Jesse runs into to Burhalter in the bathroom, and and Burhalter just kind of looks at him and goes, you know, you guys lost because you didn't adapt, you didn't you didn't you didn't want to change your game style, you didn't want to change your game style, and Jesse's just kind of looking at him. And he's like, look, we adapted to you guys. Look, we were playing off of Kai Kamara's head. We, you know, normally we like to play, but, and Jesse's just kind of like this guy. <laughs> this guy. Greg's great. I mean, he's insatiable, man. And he's a, he's a learner and he's, he's just growth mindset. He's, he's, he's a special guy. I like him. And I, I think Jesse's a heck of a coach. I mean, all these guys, Jesse's pathway, what he's doing is, is remarkable. I got yeah. you know, a lot of respect for him. Bob, Bob, Got a lot of respect for him, you know, in, in what he's doing. So, it, we we got a lot of great American coaches. It's it's really healthy, no, better better than ever for sure. All right, we'll let you off easy here. Um, best Bruce Arena story with your best Bruce Arena impersonation, and I know you got a good one. <laughs> Everybody, you're, you're one of the originals. <laughs> I mean, your whole your whole era has got a good look, Gordo. <laughs> I'm not going to answer this fucking question, Gordo. 
Um, he's he's the best. Uh, to, to the look, the look. You got the look right too. Yeah, the we look. gotta get the video. <laughs> Just send it. Stupid question. Gordo. Just send it up top for Gordo. <laughs> um, he, uh, I there's so many. He's he's a gem, man. He's a gem. He's he's such an important guy for this country and like soccer and me and you and you guys. Um, certain stories, you know. I lived with him for a while. When I, first, when I first was a pro, um, it was like family. They always had a revolving door of DC United people staying there, and you know, I stayed with uh, my first year. They like just stay with us, and I, I they had a basement. I, I stayed with uh, Kenny had a, had a basement down there, so Kenny was like my little brother for you know a year, and I went to a soccer game, so I was real family with them for That's a awesome. while, and it was it made the transition. Uh, great and um that's great yeah i don't know uh, well I'll, i mean i'll you, come back with that one i'll please no, it's it. great i mean you're the first no, one good. that has gone through that and not answered one question so <laughs> you know i don't know what to do with it it, it was it was sure that's my cool. political side you see you see the political side you are. I, I do that's 10 years Bro, of press that's conferences. coaching yeah exactly Bro, you probably remember this of press conferences we're uh we're out it's i think it was 2014 14 or 15 um and and we're playing New York, <laughs> and um, and he's like, uh, he's like Dan, uh, what are you what are you doing back there on, on the back post? And I was like, well, Bruce, the, the ball's about to get, you know, I, I'm reading the play, it's about to get crossed and whipped in, and he's like, well, what, what what are you what are you marking? And I was like, um, <laughs> you know, I'm I'm reading the game here, I'm marking the space. Was that against us in 2015? Yeah, he's yeah. I was like, I'm just trying to cover this space because, you know, it's a dangerous spot for the, this ball. We've talked about how much, uh, I don't know, Zizzo is probably yeah. whipping, <laughs> whipping crosses in. And he's like, uh, you know, um, I can't recall. Who's uh, who's leading the golden boot right now? <laughs> and I was like, um, uh, I, don't, I don't know, uh, BWP? He's like, yeah, pr pretty sure it's not space is it and i was like oh. <laughs> and he walks away and the best piece of it the best piece of it is which i know you can hear this in his voice he walks away and he's like shit, shit the dope <laughs> that dope you know you know bruce used to call gargs rocky it was the best thing of all time hey rocky what are you doing uh, Oh man, every I mean we got more more Bruce stories than you can yeah. shake a stick oh, at. I, I have my first kid and he's like, Would you would you name it? And I was like, <laughs> that was um, great. Golden. It's my daughter, Golden. And he's like, That's a stupid name. <laughs> <laughs> no, no filter. No filter. It's like it's like it's one day before the MLS Cup final I remember and I had a that. kid. He's oh my god, I was he that told was me what classic. To, wow. I was really uh, recruiting. All right. You He's might have good. well, Benny. You nailed it. You went through all five and didn't did. answer one, uh, but your interview <laughs> was phenomenal. So yeah, we'll, thanks, Ben. We'll appreciate. Accept, we appreciate will the time. It. Thanks, guys. I'm loving the podcast. I'm glad you guys are doing this. You guys are good voices, and I'm glad you guys are transitioning somewhat well. And um, have me back on soon. All right. Oh, thanks, man. Ben. Right, buddy. Appreciate right. it. Take yeah, care. Have fun.